Hello again, everyone. Are you ready for chapter two of Wait Till Helen Comes? It's time for them to move out into the country and to that old church and where things start happening. All righty. This is chapter two of Wait Till Helen Comes. On the first day of summer vacation, Dave and a bunch of his friends loaded everything we owned into a U-Haul truck and headed toward our no home in Hallwell, Maryland. Dave drove the truck with Heather, with Heather sitting beside him, looking very pleased with herself, and Mom, Michael, and I followed in our old van. Behind us was another van in even worse shape than ours, filled with Dave's friends. As we turned off the beltway, the roads narrowed and wound up and down hills, curved past farms, tunneled through forests. As we bounced along over ruts and bumps, Mom pointed out the scenic spots. Oh, see that old barn over there? She exclaimed, pointing to a building on the verge of collapse. Oh, isn't that a perfect subject for a painting? When Michael and I mumbled something about Andrew Wyeth having already painted a hundred barns just like that, she'd spot something else, an untwisted old tree, a line hung with a flapping clothes, a flock of geese strutting across the yard, and she'd just get excited all over again. Oh, you two are just going to love living here, she said more than once, never losing hope that we'd eventually agree with her. After a couple of hours of driving, Mom turned to us and said, here we are! Swinging off the road behind the U-Haul, she pointed at the, white, the little white church. Oh, isn't it beautiful? It was pretty. No matter how much I preferred our row house, I had to admit that Mom and Dad had picked a lovely place. Quiet and peaceful, the small building sat by the side of the road, shaded by two huge maple trees. Although it had no steeple, the tall pointed windows and the red double doors left no doubt that it was indeed a church. On one side was an addition, built to harmonize with the original building, and on the other was the carriage house Dave planned to use as his pottery workshop. Behind it rose a forest in deep green leaf, and on either side, fields of corn basked in the morning sun. Across the road, a herd of cows grazed at us, their big brown eyes taking in everything. Look, it's the welcome wagon, Michael nudged me, pointing at the cows. Where are the other houses? I looked around, hoping I missed seeing them. Oh, there's a farmhouse about a mile down the road, Mom said. But I thought we were moving to Hallwell, I frowned at Mom. That's our post office address, she said, looking at herself in the rearview mirror and smoothing her hair. I could tell she was a little uncomfortable at having misled me deliberately or accidentally into thinking we would at least have some neighbors and the prospect of making new friends. The town itself is only a couple miles away, she added apologetically. You said there was a library, Michael said, leaning across me, his voice full of anger. I thought you meant it was just a few blocks away or something. You can ride your bikes into Hallwell. It's not far. Mom opened her door and prepared to get out. I told you we were moving to the country. Before we could say anything else, Dave's friends pulled into the driveway behind us and screeched to a stop in a cloud of white dust. At the same time, Dave and Heather got out of the U-Haul and walked towards us. I couldn't help noticing that Dave looked a little tense and Heather was dragging on his hand, trying to keep him from joining mom. Our first day in Hallwell wasn't beginning very well. Come on, Jean, Dave said to mom, let's get this show on the road. I'll carry my stuff in, Michael said, jumping out of the van. I knew he was worried that somebody would, that I, I knew he was worried that somebody would drop his insect collection or misplace his books. How about you take care of Heather? Dave tugged her toward me, despite her efforts to dig her heels into the dust. As usual, she was frowning through the tangles of hair, almost hiding her face. Uh, what should I do? I turned to mom, hoping she'd suggest I help her with some important, but she sided with Dave as usual. 
Oh, you could take her for a walk, Mom says, patting my shoulder. There's a nice little path down through the woods. She pointed off to the right of the church. It leads to a creek, and you could wait or something. Don't go too far, though, Dave added, prying his fingers away from Heather's clutch. Knowing I had no choice, I tried to take Heather's hand, but she snatched it away, scowling at me like I tried to pinch her. Go with Molly now, Dave succeeded in freeing himself. Daddy has a lot of work to do, honey. You and Molly can have a real nice time. I don't want to go with her, Heather whined, her voice rising in pitch. I want to stay with you, Daddy. I don't like it here. You heard me, Heather. Don't make Daddy cross with you. Come on, Heather. I started walking toward the path, and after some more pleading from Dave, she finally followed me. Silently, we entered the cool shade of the trees. Above our heads, the leaves rustled softly, and the sunlight splattered down through the branches, gleaming here and there in the whim of a wind. A butterfly as big as my hand fluttered across the path, and I was glad that Michael wasn't there. If he'd seen it, he'd have gotten his net and added it to his collection. Look, Heather, I pointed to the butterfly as it rested for a moment on a leaf. Isn't it pretty? She glanced at it. It's nothing but a caterpillar with wings, she muttered. After that, I didn't try talking to her until we found the creek. The water was shallow, maybe two or three inches deep, and it was racing over a bed of stones between low banks. It was perfect for wading. Sitting down, I took off my running shoes and socks. Want to come with me? I asked her as I stepped into the clear water. She shook her head and continued following the path along the creek. Shrugging my shoulders, I splashed along beside her, enjoying the feel of the cold water as it rose higher, creeping up to my knees as the creek narrowed and the banks grew steeper. After waiting for about five minutes, I came around a curve and was confronted with a rusty barbed wire fence from which hung a no trespassing sign. On the other side, a herd of cattle looked up from the water and lowed. For a minute, I thought they were going to charge at me, fence or no fence, and I scrambled up the bank to Heather's side. They're just cows, she said, as if she knew I was thinking they might be bulls. They won't hurt you. I know, I said, trying to sound a lot more convincing than I felt. Do you want to go back to the church? She gave me one of her disdainful looks. Well, we can't go any farther, can we? She looked pointedly at the fence and the cows watching us from the other side. Still carrying my shoes, I followed Heather back down the path. Instead of turning off through the woods, taking the route we'd originally chosen, we walked farther along the creek. It was a pleasant path, cool and shady, and I was too busy watching a couple of dragonflies darting back and forth across the water to pay much attention to what Heather was doing when she stopped suddenly just ahead of me and I bumped right into her. What's the matter? I asked. She looked at me over her shoulder. Look. She pointed at a crooked fence almost hidden by weeds and bushes. What's that? Despite the warmth of the afternoon, I felt goosebumps prick all over me. It's a graveyard, I whispered. It wasn't very big, and the grass had grown almost as tall as the tombstones. But here and there a stone angel lifted its marble wings towards the sky, and a cross or two tilted out of the weeds. It was without a doubt the spookiest place I had ever seen, and I wanted to run back to the church, but Heather just stared at it, fascinated. Are you afraid? she said, her thumb hovering near her mouth. Of course I'm not, I lied, reluctant to expose any weakness to Heather. Edging back down the path toward the church, I said, let's go see what Mom and Dave are doing. They're probably wondering where we are. It would be shorter to cut through the graveyard, Heather said, her pale eyes probing mine. It's probably private property, I said. You get in trouble for trespassing. But Heather only smiled and then slipped through a gap in the fence. Come on, Molly, she said, daring me to follow her. 
While I watched, she ran through the weeds, paying no attention to the tombstones. It's bad luck to step on a grave, I called after her. Pausing by a stone cherub, she caressed his cheek and then whirled about, performing a weird little dance as she wove in and out of the tombstones. Molly's afraid, Molly's afraid, she chanted. You're crazy, I shouted at her. And then I turned my back on the graveyard and I ran through the woods, ducking branches that reached for my hair and stumbling over roots. By the time I got to the church, I was out of breath and my heart was pounding so hard I thought my ribs would split. Catching sight of mom disappearing through a side door, I followed her inside and caught up with her in the hall. I grabbed her arm and almost made, the, made her drop the box she was carrying. Molly, Molly, what's wrong? She put the box down and stared at me. Where's Heather? Has something happened? I, sh I shook my head, still gasping for breath. There, there's, a, there's a graveyard behind the church, I panted. A graveyard? Of course there is. It's part of the property. It's ours? We own a graveyard. Well, no, not exactly, Mom frowned at me. For heaven's sakes, Molly, have you run in here and it scared me half to death just because of a graveyard? You, you never said anything about it. You never told me that we were going to have a bunch of dead people buried in our backyard. <laughs> I started crying then, and Mom put her arm around me. Dead people in our yard? Michael ran out of a room down the hall. What's she talking about, Mom? Oh, you found the graveyard. Dave appeared behind Michael, grinning as if I had done something marvelously clever. What did, why didn't you tell us? I pulled away from Mom, wiping my eyes on my shirt tail. I didn't want Dave to know I was what a baby I was. I didn't think it was worth mentioning. Dave winked at mom. Just think what quiet neighbors they'll be. No wild parties, no loud music, no dropping in to borrow a cup of sugar or the lawnmower. <laughs> I, I bet they won't even speak to us. He gave mom a hug and a kiss, and they both laughed while I stood there feeling foolish. Are the graves old? Michael tried to push between mom and me in his haste to go see them. Hey, hold it, Dave said, stopping him. You're not finished getting your room in order. And Molly hasn't even started. You two get to work. You see the graveyard later. That's not fair, Michael said. Molly's been playing with Heather ever since we got here. And I've been working. Can't I go outside for just a minute? Where, where is Heather? David asked as if he just realized she wasn't with me. Last time I saw her, she was dancing around the graveyard, I said. For all I know, she's still there. Without looking at him or mom, I followed Michael down the hall to, to the room I had to share with Heather. As I shut the door behind me, I heard Heather come into the house. <laughs> Molly ran away from me, she whined, her shrill voice carrying right through the closed door. Heaving a great sigh, I prepared myself for a lecture from Dave and set about unpacking my books and arranging them on the shelves next to my bed. It was a nice room, I thought, bigger and airier than my old room in Baltimore. And if I hadn't had to share it with Heather, I would have really enjoyed living in it. From the windows between our beds, I could see the mountains. But when I moved closer to see the whole view, I realized that the graveyard was only a short distance away, per partially hidden from the house by a tall boxwood hedge. Shivering, I drew back from the window. How was I going to sleep at night, knowing how close it was? End of chapter two, wait till Howling comes.